I was exceptionally good at not letting people know how dysfunctional I was. I had to work twice or even triply hard just to do normal things. The issues that bothered my husband and I and caused tension in our marriage were things like time blindness. I was always late for things. As a result, I would make him late too. People had the idea that ADHD only presented in hyperactive, screaming boys who failed primary school. I wasn't disruptive in class. I went to an IP school. Hi, I'm Dr. Janani. I am 30 years old. I was diagnosed with ADHD in 2019 when I was 28 years old. Hi, I'm Moon Lake Lee. I was diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 50. My name is Cheyenne Sia, I'm 39 years old. I was diagnosed around 29, 30, so it's around the 10 year mark this year. Whenever teachers gave me assignments, they would never get handed in. It's not for the lack of trying. At that point, I really, really wanted to be a vet. When it came to my A-levels, I didn't do well enough to get a scholarship. So my dad very kindly agreed to sponsor me despite me not showing much promise. So I told myself, I need to succeed. I don't want to disappoint him uh, again. And that's when the anxiety mounted and mounted and mounted. And in hindsight, the anxiety is what made my adrenaline levels rise and made me be able to concentrate enough to get the grades needed to get accepted into vet school. I used to take like eight cups of coffee a day. Then when I needed to wind down, I started drinking alcohol quite early too. PhD requires a lot of executive function skills, administrative skills, planning skills that I did not have. It came to a point where no matter how many cups of coffee, no matter how much I tried, nothing, nothing chemical worked. I had symptoms of depression where I thought everything was just pointless. I just wanted to lie in bed. Um, I didn't shower for days just wanted to die, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I was hauled to see a doctor. They thought I had anxiety and depression. There'll be moments when we are having a very serious talk and then suddenly I'll interrupt with something quite irrelevant. So it seemed that I wasn't listening. He, I think he felt that I wasn't respecting him. All these little things, that um, bugged him about me were character flaws. And he'll always say, you know, why are you like that? There's something wrong with you, can you go and fix it? You know, it may not seem major, but it does add up. And then particularly in a relationship, that can be something quite uh, troubling. During my lower secondary uh, period, I stumbled across psychology. When I read the section of ADHD, I'm like, hey, that sounds exactly like me. When I saw my first uh, psychiatrist, I was 16. As soon as the doctor heard the name of my school, he was like, ah, no, you can't have ADHD. You are from a good school. You are probably just stressed. I started believing what they said. When I, finally, when I saw the doctor for a formal diagnosis, I was 28. When I was sent to uh, IMH, I was bumped around. They put me on various medications for anxiety, for depression. I've been very fortunate that I've had a couple of visiting doctors who were not schooled locally. To them, ADHD awareness is greater. One of the visiting doctors actually asked me, Cheyenne, have you had all of these issues since young? Be it the sleep issue, the inability to organise, the stress at planning, the short-term memory that is almost as bad as Dory the fish. 
from Finding Nemo. And when I said yes, it's always been there since young. That's when something changed in his expression. And he said, you know, Shine, I think you might have ADHD. Shall we go through a diagnosis to ascertain? My daughter was diagnosed with ADHD in late 2018 when she was 15. And as I was doing more of the readings, I realised that actually there's a, quite a strong family connection. If you have a child who has ADHD, one or both parents could have ADHD. At that time, I didn't know too many adults that were diagnosed with ADHD. And he said that you know, after diagnosis and you know, he was prescribed medication, it actually gave him a lot of clarity. When I was diagnosed in late 2019, I was under a period of overwhelm. So that's why I thought I, I should seek some help. When I was diagnosed in, in 2019, I felt vindicated and also I felt relieved. I mean, it's like finally it helps me to explain uh, all of the symptoms that I had. At least I'm not like stupid or I'm not like, you know, lazy. And then I also felt a sense of grief because I do think about what I have experienced as a result of being undiagnosed all these years. And I do wonder how things um, could have turned out if I had been diagnosed earlier. I had self-acceptance. The second area really is the relationship. Now that he understands the wiring a bit better, he would be a little bit more kind and more compassionate, you know, in our interaction. My husband has realised that some of the things he actually liked about me actually were my ADHD wiring. Things like um, being spontaneous. So he really had to learn to take the whole package, right? You know, the good stuff as well as the stuff I need to work on better. The first few thoughts was clarity. I'm not like broken as in a worthless human being. My brain is not wrong, but maybe it's not suitable for this post-industrial era where I have to sit down and really spend hours focusing. I have my strengths elsewhere. I also occasionally coach girls with ADHD because girls with ADHD, how they face it and how they internalise it, their emotions are quite different from how boys generally get it. I hope to buy these girls an opportunity at a better life than the one that I had. Now.